All right, so first, we just wanted to introduce everybody to y'all so you have some names and faces, so you know, who you're talking to. Um, I am Miss Hillary Benedict. I'm the Director of School Counseling. We also have Mrs. Adele Neems Thompson, who is the Bronze Program Counselor. You've probably heard from her already this year, but if you haven't, here she is. And then we have Mrs. Susanna Wilson, who is the Elementary and Middle School Counselor Assistant, and we'll all be talking to you a little bit today. All right. So the topics that we are going to cover in this webinar, we're going to start with just a basic what is the bronze program. A lot of you probably already have a pretty good understanding of what it is because you're in it. But if not, then this will be very informative. Um, after that, we've got how is bronze different from other programs. So that'll just tell you a little bit about um, the differences between this program and some of the others. And then we will talk about what is included and not included in the bronze program. Um, as well as, you know, what falls under the parent's responsibility for this particular program, because it is parent-led. We'll talk about some of the issues that families and students run into, and the reason we bring that up is so that you all can prepare in advance, um, because preparation does help avoid a lot of issues. And then after that, we'll be talking about some premium elective offerings, as well as just some general resources. So with that being said, I am going to pass it over to Mrs. Neems Thompson. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. So what is the bronze program? The bronze program is designed for parents who want to be more involved in their children's education. The program extends only up to 10th grade. After 10th grade, students who return will have to move up to the silver program. There are many aspects and components to graduation, and we want to make sure that students get the necessary support. The absence of teacher support in this program means that parents must take on the role of explaining lessons to their children. Teachers will not address student questions unless they are for clarification purposes. To remain in the program, students must maintain grades above 73%, which is a 2.0 on the grading scale. Students who fall below these thresholds typically lack the necessary support at home to succeed. Parents have to keep in mind that students cannot handle the entire curriculum on their own, especially in elementary and middle school. This is why when a student is failing, uh, we contact the parents and uh, we warn the parents to, to make some changes in their schedule to help their students. And after that, we will upgrade them to the silver program if no change is noticed. Homeschooling can be challenging and we understand that things happen in life, that parents um, need to work. We encourage parents to make sure that they understand their students' capabilities, where they struggle, what they need help with. We encourage students to become independent learners, and with time and parent support, they will be able to handle more and more on their own. It is important for them to know that they have a good support system behind them. Next slide, please. So how is the bronze program different from other programs? The first this difference that you will notice, as I mentioned, that there is no teacher support and parents are the teachers. Many parents get upset sometimes about teachers not helping their students. Um, if a student doesn't understand something, the parent is responsible of explaining the lesson. And that is why bronze parents sign a contract. That is the second uh, difference from other program. And this contract explains what are the responsibilities of the parents, what is included in the program and what is not included in the program. Another difference is, as I mentioned on the previous slide, that there is a threshold of 73%. And um, the upgrade happens if the student fails or falls almost in all his courses under 73%. Um, although the bronze program is our minimal support level program and it is more affordable, it is not always the best option for the student. If we notice that a student is failing almost everything or a student is not working for several weeks, 
and we already contacted the parents and no improvement has been noticed, we will upgrade the student to the silver program and the students will be DNR'd. DNR means that do not re-enroll in the program. This means that if a student tries to re-enroll with failing grades or low grades into the bronze program next school year, they will not be able to do that. If a student has been upgraded to the silver program and proves in one semester time that he, is cap he or she is capable of uh, keeping their grades above 73% and staying on task, they will be able to downgrade again to the bronze program. And also, uh, some services are not available for brown students. These are honors, dual enrollment, AP classes, and the intervention is not available in the bronze program. Um, this is very important to understand for those who are uh, who have children with IEPs or 504, because it, the the intervention team. Only, it's only available from the silver program and the VOB above. In case your student needs this support, we encourage you to upgrade to the silver program. Next slide. So I wanted to bring up the bronze agreement. Uh, I think that this is where the most misunderstanding is. And as you can see, we most of you signed this one. Everything is listed, listed what is not included in this program. And we are not trying to blind sign anyone. That is why we are requesting you to read through to understand what you are signing up for. Um, <clears throat> the hardest is when parents sign up without reading the contract properly, and they are upset that there is no teacher support for them. It is hard not to be able to help because it's not part of the program. And um, next, Ms. Susanna will talk about what's included and what's not included. Thanks so much. So like Mrs. Thompson said, we are gonna take a quick look at what is included in the bronze program as well as what is not included. We've already mentioned a few of these pieces, but we'll just review now. Um, so bronze is for grades three through 10. So if you decide to attend Enlightium past 10th grade, you will need to update to the silver package. Teacher response time and grading time in the bronze program is 72 hours. And in busier seasons, this can fluctuate a little bit, so your patience is much appreciated. The live session recordings are available in LiveBinder after the live session has been completed. And if you do need help accessing LiveBinder, feel free to send a teacher a message in Ignitia or email your counselor, um, and they should be able to help you. There are five core courses plus PE included for students who are in elementary and middle school within the bronze program. And then for our ninth and 10th graders in the bronze program, we do have seven credits each school year that are included. And as Mrs. Thompson mentioned before, bronze students do not have access to honors, NCAA, customized projects, AP classes, or dual enrollment, as well as intervention. So if any of those things feel important to you, uh, you may want to consider upgrading to silver package or above. And next, we are going to talk a little bit about parent responsibility. Um, as parent responsibility is very important within the bronze program since it is parent led. Um, but a really important piece to consider when homeschooling your students is creating a fun learning experience. And this is especially true for younger students. So we would encourage you to consider letting your students choose a specific area in the home to complete their coursework and also decorating it to their personality and their interests. We would encourage you to avoid spaces that are associated with rest or recreation activity like the bedroom or the living room if possible. And we also want to eliminate as many temptations. So feel free to put away any technology that's not related to your schoolwork. Developing a routine is also really important. Most of the issues in this program come up when bronze families are not following a routine or being consistent in their schoolwork. And this type of inconsistency can lead to student frustration, and it puts a lot of pressure on the student. 
So creating and following a daily schedule can be very helpful. And we do have a daily schedule available. You can find that on our knowledge base if you're interested in modeling your own schedule after the one that we've created. We also recommend starting each school day just by being aware of the topics that your students are going to be studying. If you are a parent who works outside the home and your student is doing the majority of their coursework by themselves, it will be really helpful if you're aware of what your student will be working on on a daily basis. So be sure to check in regularly with your student to ensure that they're understanding their lessons. And if a concept is new to your student, you as the parent are responsible to explain this concept to them. And this is a really important stepping stone in solidifying knowledge, just making sure that your student has a general understanding of a concept when it is new. We do have a parent portal that's available for you as parents to see the progress of your students as well as their grades in each course. The portal is going to look very similar to your student's Ignitia account. As well, we have a parent app, and this is a great connection point for parents who are in the same area. We recommend downloading the parent app to connect with other parents, and the parent app is another way to sign your students up for social opportunities. We highly recommend, if you're able not to leave your student unattended, uh, plan for some accountability, making sure that someone is around to monitor and support your child as needed, since this program is parent-led. As I mentioned prior, we do have a great resource. It's called LiveFinder. Um, it's a collection of extra resources and supplemental materials, such as videos for your students. It's organized by grade level and subject, and it gives extra help for almost every lesson that your student is going to come across. So the resources in LiveFinder are handpicked by their teachers, so we highly recommend looking into it if you have not already. Mrs. Thompson, uh, your student's counselor, is here to help you. So please, you, you are invited to contact her via Ignitia or email if you have any issues arise. And if you know that you won't have time to help your student um, and you are able to afford the upgrade, you're more than welcome to consider that as an option. And if you're unable to afford an update, you may want to consider finding a tutor or another support person in your student's life who can help them when difficult subject matter arises. And I will now pass it back off to Mrs. Thompson and she's going to take a look at pitfalls with us. So the hardest project, the hardest for students are the projects and essays and experiments. And I wanted to uh, talk a tiny bit about this. It is important to start projects, essays, or experiments at the beginning of each unit to allow enough time for uh, completion. I usually suggest students to spend one afternoon on printing off these longer projects and having them in a folder with due dates listed. Check this folder often and start your project as soon as you can. It is easier to put together an essay or project or an experiment in multiple steps than working on it in one sitting. Waiting until the, the due date may cause issues like needing extra time to grow a plant or write an essay or complete a week-long experiment. The Live Binder is available for all the students and um, you can review the additional help material connected to the project that you are working on and um, make sure that your project aligns with the requirements using the provided forms. Usually there is a downloadable form of the experiments and essay which gives step-by-step -step guide on what students have to do. Uh, check your work for completeness, spelling and grammar. Consider using tools like Grammarly Print off the downloadable experiment sheet as teachers will tell you exactly what you need to do. Add the header, the name, course, teacher name, date, title and of the project. These have to be added to any written assignments. Each teacher sends out an introductory message with additional guidance on what are their expectations. It's very important for students to know that approximately 45% of the total unit grade is the project. Um, your student can have all A's, but if they don't complete the project, they will fail the course. Another pitfall is falling behind. It's easy to fall behind if a student doesn't log in every day. 
Understandably, there are circumstances like illnesses, unexpected events, family trips, which, and um, in these cases, you can use Fridays to catch up, as we don't assign course, uh, we don't assign homework for students for Fridays. You can also talk to me uh, about the reason of absence, and I can a few times reschedule you. This doesn't mean that I'm skipping assignments. This means that I will push the past due assignments into the future, and it will be redistributed to the days left in the school year. Um, some parents ask and students about the absences. Um, treating lighting like a traditional school, regular attendance is required. There is an absence form that you can submit if your student is missing more than uh, three days of school. And um, please let me know if the student is sick or they are hospitalized or they are going to be out for a longer period of time. Um, fall, failing grades are not accepted, as I mentioned a few times in this presentation. Um, that's why I contact parents most often when a student falls behind. We can talk about it. You can schedule um, an appointment with me and we can talk what would be a good um, path for your student. And um, another pitfall is when parents don't help their students. It is essential to understand that you as a parent are responsible to help your student. The counselor is responsible to keep parents accountable and make sure that the student gets the necessary support. In other words, I am the bad guy. That is why we upgrade students to the bronze from bronze to silver if there is no parent help. And um, Miss Susanna will talk about what's available for an additional fee. All right. So we do have some options that are available to students at an additional fee, and those are going to be premium electives. So as you can see on your screen, we do have uh, several options as far as premium electives go and you can consider those for your student if those are interesting to you. And if you want those added to your schedule, just reach out to your counselor and we will make sure that you are aware of the additional fee. The billing team will bill you accordingly and those can get added to your student's schedule. And then I also wanted to mention, we do have a standardized test. It's called the Iowa Complete that is available to families. So parents who are interested in having their students take the Iowa Complete will need to register their students. It's not something that we just automatically assign to all students. Some states do require standardized assessments, others don't. Um, so parents are the ones who are responsible for knowing their state's homeschool requirements. So if you're aware that your state does require a standardized assessment, um, communications will be sent out later this year about the Iowa Complete, and that is a great option to fulfill that type of requirement for your state. And Mrs. Thompson is going to take us through some resources now. Mute, man. <laughs> so LiveBinder is the one of the first ones that I want to talk about. This is in Lightium's resource file where parents can find additional videos and help for almost all the courses. It's organized by grade level and you can access the courses like that and the additional material. Also, I would like to... Uh, talk about Khan Academy. Khan Academy is not in Lightium's um, curriculum, but you can find solutions, you can find lessons explained, and it's a good resource if something, if your student is not understanding something. YouTube, although some parents may have reservations, YouTube offers hundreds of videos on all school related topics. It is especially helpful in math, offering various explanation styles, songs, and videos for kids of all ages. If concerned, parents can supervise their children as they are watching the YouTube video. Another a solution if you don't have time to support your student is private tutor. Um, please don't leave your students alone. 
there are many high school students who for a minimum price would be able to help your student uh, succeed. If you have any questions anytime, you can schedule a Calendly with me uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I have um, open hours. Also, I want to point, um, direct you to knowledge base. We, this is similar to an encyclopedia. It is in Lightroom Encyclopedia, and you can find everything, every question to uh, that you are looking on an, for an answer. Um, it has school-related counselors. You can find your counselor contact information, teachers contact info, um, webinars, electives, billing questions, support of any kind. Uh, how to request a record or how to submit a record to us. I um, would suggest to bookmark this page so you can easily access it. And um, next, Miss Hillary will talk about the PSAT. Yeah, I just wanted to briefly cover this. This is going to be for our um, ninth and 10th graders, probably mostly our 10th graders, but we do have some ninth graders who are, um, you know, interested in this as well. So this is good information for you. And honestly, for any upcoming ninth and 10th graders too, you'll probably also eventually be here. So this is just important to know. Uh, the 2024-2025 PSAT testing dates are coming up. Uh, PSAT 10, you'll notice, obviously, as the title suggests, that's for 10th graders. It is often later in the year. So March 3rd through April 30th is the most likely window that your local schools will be offering it because this is still a test you have to take locally. Um, we can't proctor it online. They still need the, the kid to be physically present to take the test. So you do have to take it at a local high school. Um, but I always tell families, reach out to your local school now and just ask when they're going to be testing it. Um, because some things you'll run into, especially for the PSAT, um, SAT is a lot easier to get into. There's lots of testing centers. There's more dates. PSAT can be a little bit more tricky because they do have to proctor it at a high school. And so the schools will pick dates. Um, the reason I say reach out now is because while it says the PSAT will be offered between March 3rd and April 30th, schools will pick any dates in between then to offer it. Um, and they might not offer it at all. So you'd want to know in advance if the school near you is even offering it or if they can direct you to a school that is. So just get that information sooner rather than later so your student can get signed up. That's especially true if your student needs accommodations because it can take a while to get accommodations processed. So if that's something that you think your student's going to need, make sure you get started now because it, it is time consuming. Um, PSAT and MSQT. That's going to be um, on a school date between October 1st and October 31st. Um, again, this is uh, 10th grade mostly. Um, and then March 3rd through April 30th. I believe it's the NMSQT that's offered earlier in the year. But again, check with your school just to see what they're offering and when. So schools may choose to administer it on those dates. Um, and it says for fall 2024 only, the PSAT and MSQT will be offered on two Saturdays to accommodate schools and students who can't test on October 12th, as that is a holiday. Um, again, why you want to contact your local school. See if they're offering it, when they're offering it. Uh, the box on there is really informative. What do you need to do? Since Enlightenment Academy is a homeschool program, you need to contact your local schools. Again, it's a little easier once you get to the SAT or ACT because that's all kind of handled online and they'll set you up with a testing location. PSATs, though, are still handled through schools, uh, but they have to be physical brick and mortar schools. So there's links on there. I recommend checking those out because those can be really helpful. Um, and it's important to know, and Mrs. Wilson touch, touched on this a little earlier, if you are a ninth or 10th grader, we don't do standardized testing for ninth and 10th grade through the school. So even if you wanted to add that on, we don't actually offer it. So we encourage our students to either do the, the PSAT, uh, the pre-ACT, or there is a test um, that can be proctored at home called the CLT, the Classic Learning Test. Uh, if you're in Florida, you might be familiar with that because it's a little bigger over there. But that can be a good one. Or, you know, you can always look locally, too, to see what your schools are offering. So just keep that in mind as you're thinking about, oh, do I need to test at the end of the year? Uh, if you're in high school specifically, just be aware that you're going to have to go 
find some testing. All right. And I believe that takes us to the questions. Um, I haven't seen any questions yet. I do. I mean, I'll answer a few that I've seen that come up commonly um, while I wait to see if anybody else chats in any questions. A big one is if your student is in bronze, can they participate in social activities? The answer is yes. We just had student social week last week um, and signups were through the parent app. So if your student didn't get signed up and they still want to do a social activity, which they're not required, that's the other question that comes up a lot is like, do I have to be social? Answer is no, but we do have the option. Um, you can sign up through the Enlightium parent app and there are still activities available for your students. If you're like, ah, oh, shoot, I missed last week. What do I do? You can go sign up still. There's still activities for them to do. Um, and we encourage our students to be involved in some kind of activity, whether that be through Enlightium or outside of Enlightium, just to get that social aspect. Um, cause we're a virtual school. So, you know, your kid might not be seeing students every single day. So we really do think that the social part is very important. Um, Mrs. Uh, Neves Thompson touched on some of the really important resources. A uh, big one that I would recommend doing as soon as this webinar is over is printing off the school calendar and putting it somewhere visual for yourself and your student. That's a big one that comes up a lot. And I will tell you, uh, this is my fifth year here. And the question I get all the time is like, why is Ignitia down? Like what's happened? And it's almost always because it's a planned time for it to be down because of grading or um, you know something like that. It's usually grading. So if you have your calendar printed off, you can save yourself the panic in the morning of like, oh, our ignition's not working. What's going on? It's like, oh, no, we knew that was going to happen. So um, that's a big one for sure. I think that's that's about it. Um, I'm not seeing any questions that got asked. Um, Ms. Thompson, do you have anything that you want to add? Any final closing words? I am grateful to, for those who came and um, this will be sent out in a recorded video sometime. And uh, thank you for coming. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're so glad to have you all here and we'll send out this recording soon. Hope you all have a great rest of your week.